This is a video for how to go about creating a small screwdriver case in Fusion 360. We'll be learning how to extrude, how to taper, loft, shell, and chamfer in Fusion. So the screwdriver case that we are creating really is just this blue base for this case that we see right here. So we're going to be actually drawing a pentagon as we go, but we want to go through and make sure we set up our settings correct and we choose the correct plane. So in document settings, I want to make sure that I'm in inches. So I default to millimeters generally, and in this case we want to be in inches. So I'm going to click on that little pencil and we're going to come over and we're going to be an inch and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to make sure I can see all of my planes in the origin and I'm going to go to create new sketch and we want this XY plane because we want to be looking straight down on the top of the object when we draw the pentagon. So one of the ways I chose that is you'll notice that in making this object, we're now looking straight down on top of the object because we're going to draw a pentagon together. So looking straight down, we're going to go to create, we're going to go to polygon, and let's choose inscribed polygon. And I want you to click on the origin and we're going to drag out. And I want you to notice what inscribed means. Right now you can see that hexagon inside the circle. So inscribed means inside. So that polygon, that hexagon right now is inside the circle. Let's choose a you know diameter of four and we're going to hit tab and we're going to hit the number five. And automatically right now you can see that we have for ourselves a pentagon. And I want you to hit enter. And you'll notice that now we have our pentagon shape, but it kind of is at a weird angle and I'd rather you know kind of switch the angle to where this line right here was horizontal and we're going to come up to the horizontal constraint and we're going to click and it's going to automatically flip horizontal for us because i want this point to be up at the top you know we were just kind of at a random angle there i wanted to keep this exactly where it was and we're going to go ahead and say finish sketch and i can click on my house button and you can see how this is laying flat how i have the front view this way right now and it's like we're looking down on top and we're going to go to extrude and we're going to click inside and as i drag up i just noticed a little bit you know we can go to the side view here i'm just going to we're not going to do like exact dimensions we're going to do just a design for this because if you were actually going to go through and design based on something you would have exact dimensions the point of the video is learning about tapering and lofting and all kinds of different things so in this case we're going to put up a distance of let's say we're going to taper up you know a half an inch so i'm going to go to 0 0.5 and our taper angle is going to be 45 degrees now let's do negative 45 it's going out it's going to go negative 45 so it goes in on itself so that can depend on the settings and how you have everything set up we're going to go negative 45 and it's going to kind of collapse in at a 45 degree angle in case you're wondering what that looks like it means that this line right here is at a 45 degree angle now if i want this to be a new body which at first i do i want this to be a body all of itself we're going to go ahead and say okay and we have our base created. Let's go to save, and I'm going to call this a uh, screwdriver case. And I'm going to hit save. Now, our next step for our screwdriver case, if we scroll down and take a look, is we want to kind of extrude this up with a little bit less of a taper than 45 than what we did before. So we're going to go into create sketch, and we're going to click on our surface. Now, if I go through and I say finish sketch, Let's watch what happens if I try to extrude this out. I can just click in the middle because I already have those lines identified. We could have gone into project geometry. We're going to choose not to do that. But in this case, since I went into sketch, just clicked on the surface, Fusion automatically sees the boundaries of that pentagon. So I'm going to go over here to the side, you know, and we're going to go up a distance of let's just say five inches and we're going to choose a taper angle and this is where we can get into design a little bit you know we're looking at designing something well what about 15 degrees or negative 15 i'm sorry negative 15 let's go in 15 negative 15 that's too much it's way too much let's go negative two yeah i kind of like that so you can come up to your isometric view and say you know what kind of an angle do i want we're going to go up five and we're just going to go ahead and just kind of taper that in and we're going to say okay and notice I stayed in join right there. Nice. So we have ourselves the base of our screwdriver case. So we've kind of extruded in. And what we want to do is we're going to actually learn about um, work planes right now. Where we're going to try to bring a work plane up and we're going to project some, some geometry. And then we're actually going to draw a circle and do some lofting. So up where it says construct, you're going to see offset plane right here. And I want you to click on this surf the top surface and we're going to drag up and we're going to actually offset a plane up from the top and i tell you what let's go one and a half up so a plane is really just you know 
a surface where two points could technically lie on. We could put one point on this, but you know, anytime you have just two points, you can actually put a plane on it. That just means an infinite surface. So if you want to think of it this way, this orange square you see is kind of like infinite. It could go on and on forever. We just want to put like, let's say like a window that's not part of the object up one and a half from the side, and we're going to say OK. Next, we're going to go up to Create Sketch, and we're going to click on that surface. And notice right here, this is what highlights. And when I click, automatically, we're going to have for ourselves our grid. Now, if I go to my side view, you can see that this up here is where we're sketching. We're not sketching on top of the object. This is where our grid is. Now, I want you to hit P on your keyboard for Project Geometry. And what you're going to project is the Pentagon. And I want you to notice that when I drag my mouse here in the middle, the Pentagon shows up. Now I could click on each, all five of these lines and project the lines up separately, but all we want is just that Pentagon surface, and we're going to click. And I'm going to say OK. And you're going to notice now that that Pentagon now is kind of elevated up above the object. Now since we used the origin for our original Pentagon, you know, right here is going to be the, kind of the center point, but we're going to try to find the center point of this Pentagon, and that can be a little bit more tricky. We're not just going to use this origin right here. We're going to try to find the center. And what we can do is we're going to drag a hold of the line command. And I'm going to drag along until I see that midpoint, until I can see that little triangle. And I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag until we have a perpendicular line. I'm just going to drag as far as I can. Just going to make sure that's perpendicular. I don't know if you could see it because of the colors, but I had that little right angle right here, and I have that as a perpendicular line. Next, we're going to come over to this other line over here, and I want to snap when that becomes a triangle. And I'm going to drag all the way through, and we want that, once it becomes perpendicular, they're going to cross. We're going to go ahead and let those two things cross right there. And this is actually the center point, where these two lines cross is actually the center point of our pentagon. We're going to go up and grab a hold of the trim command, which is this pair of scissors. And we're going to click, and we're going to trim off these two lines. It's going to say a warning about constraints. That's okay. And we're going to click on circle, center point circle. Find this center point right here. Notice when I drag out, you can see now that that would be the center point. See where those kind of snap to that outside circle? You can actually see where it kind of snap there and fit perfectly. That's how we found the center point. So I'm going to drag out, and we're going to say a distance of, you know, this is kind of a, some original design that, you know, you can do yourself or have with your students. I'm going to say, you know what, let's do 3.75. Three and three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to go to finish sketch. Click on my house button. Notice what we have now. We have that circle and we have, we kind of have two surfaces in here. Now we're going to go to the loft command. And a loft forces two surfaces on separate planes to kind of morph into each other. So the first surface we're going to choose is inside our pentagon. The next one we're going to choose is inside both of the both of these. So notice I could have trimmed this out of the middle. Maybe I, maybe I should have, but I have two surfaces now. And I want this to morph up into these two surfaces. So I have this kind of little, you know, pie piece over here and this little Pac-Man shape. And I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. And you'll notice now that we have this morphed up into this object. Pretty cool stuff. So we've tapered an extrusion up and created an angle. We did another taper, and now we've done a loft up to here. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to click on our new sketch, and let's go up here to the top, and we're going to place for ourselves a circle. And we're going to draw in holes, and I normally would, would recommend that you, use the whole, that you use the whole command, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to do some circles. So what I want to do is I want to come up to the object, and we're going to click along the y-axis. We'll do a location dimension later. Let's put in about, uh, let's do 0.45 will be our diameter, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, I want you to know that you might be thinking to yourself, I mean, like, why aren't, why aren't we doing exact measurements? I don't think anything would fit in there if I was using a, a drill bit or a screwdriver bit. This is all just original design. Again, the point of the video is understanding how to utilize all of these concepts. And I'm going to go to Sketch Dimension, and I'm going to go from my origin to the center point, and I'm going to drag out, and it, we're about 1.3. So let's, let's just stick, you know, with almost, you know, almost one and a third inches, and we're just going to hit Enter. And I want you to go to Finish Sketch. And I'm going to click on my house, and we're going to go to Extrude. And I'm going to click inside that circle, and I'm going to kind of drag down. And one of the cool things about extruding in this view is look at how I can drag down and see how far the cut would go inside the object. This is one of the neatest parts of Fusion is, you know, you can put in exact numbers, but, you know, I can look in here and say, you know, that looks about like the right distance. And so we're just going to stay with negative 5, and you're going to keep the cut, and you're going to say OK. And depending on your internet, it'll work. Now, 
I don't want to go, I didn't have you draw a whole bunch of them because if, you know, if we go back and look at the actual object here, there's holes in the top and we're going to shell here in a second. Let's take a look back here at the object again. You know, you see these five holes at the top and there's a big hole here in the middle. We'll do that last, but we're going to circular pattern these other holes. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to create and we're going to go to pattern down here and we're going to go to circular pattern. And what are we patterning? We're going to pattern this hole. And it's going to ask us for an axis. Well, what's the axis? I can click on any one of these arcs, and you're going to see that I have now, this, this is following the center point, because I clicked an arc. It's doing the center point of the arc, which would be the same thing as the center point of the circle. We want five of these. I'm going to click on my house. Even if I go to the side right here, I can see the lines coming down. Say OK. Look at what we have. We now have those five holes. Now, within Fusion, you know, I kind of have this off my screen, but down at the bottom, you can see my mouse. If I pull, come down here, you can see where all these different histories of everything you've done reside. And you can right-click on any one of those icons. Like, I'm right-clicking on this extrusion that I did, and I go to Edit Profile Sketch, and I can say, you know what, actually, you know, all I really wanted, this is 0.45. I say, you know, this is actually 0.47. I'm just going to make up a number and hit Enter. And when I go back to Finish Sketch, all those are going to adjust to what that is. Perfect. Let's go back to Sketch. We're going to go to the top of the object and let's draw another circle here in the middle. Again, I normally a lot of times I would just I would recommend use the whole command, but just for the sake of learning, we're just going to learn this way. I don't want that. I don't want that origin. I wanted the other origin of my whole of the uh, of the Pentagon. I tell you what, let's do use let's do use the whole command for this. Let's hit let's hit undo because I would have to go back and do some more geometry and things like that. Let's go back to the center point of the actual hole here, and we're going to come up on this surface. And what we want for a, you know, a reference in this case is, you know, we want our outside edge to be the reference. And notice how that went automatically into the middle when I clicked on this little arc over here. We have that in the middle. And what I want is the diameter in this case, I think I said like 1.3. Yeah, you know, let's do that. That looks right. And again, within the whole command, I'm going to go to front and drag this down. Let's see how far down we want this to go. I'll put it about like that. For drill point, let's have a flat drill point. We don't really need one at an angle. And we're just going to keep it at this distance. And we're going to say OK. Now we pretty much have for ourselves our, you know, screwdriver set here. There's one last thing we need to do. And if we, you know, if we go back and we take a look at the bottom of the set that we are making, you're going to see, you know, that it's shelled out at the bottom. So let's go back to the object. And we are going to go to the shell command. And I'm going to click on the bottom. And automatically it's going to say, we don't really like the thickness that you've created. Now I'm going to put in 0.1. Let's see if we can do tenth of an inch. And notice when I put in 0.1, automatically it's showing that it's shelled out that bottom. We're going to go ahead and we're going to say, OK. Nice. So with the object right here, we're going to go to a, we're going to, excuse me, not manage materials, I actually clicked on that. We're going to go to modify and we're going to go to appearance. And when appearance shows up, we want to make this, you know, look like a blue color. So I went into plastic and, you know, you can always go into paint. Let's go into paint here. And I want to try to find, you know, a glossy, nice glossy blue color. And I'm going to click and hold down and drag it out and let off. And we now have this made out of blue. I was thinking about that for the blue that we see in here. So cool object. You know, I noticed that they, they extruded, you know, up from the top, you know, another cylinder in here. I mean, theoretically speaking, we could go back to ours and, uh, you know, do this differently. You know, you can go back to this surface here and go to finish sketch. And if you want to do like a different kind of design, you know, you could click right here on this object in here and extrude it. Let's go to extrude, click on that object. I can just drag up and use that and say join. If you wanted to do something different for the top, with this model, you can. Ours looks a little bit different. You know, notice how mine is offset here a little bit in the middle. So maybe we don't want to use just exactly that geometry. We might want to go back and do something different. But from this view, it's in the center. We can do however we wish when you're designing any kind of an object when it comes into um, doing polygons, doing lofting, and doing any kind of tapering. I deviated a little bit from this because we weren't dealing with exact dimensions, but the point of them talking about tapering within this assignment was if I did come in and say, you know what, let's go ahead and do a taper in this case. If I want to come in and say extrude and click inside of here, I mean, we wouldn't want to do this with the holes that we have, but if I said, you know what, I actually want to taper this in a little, 
I can taper it out, taper it in, and say I want to do a little bit of a taper that way. So in allowing students to do some form of, let's say, an original design with this, with lofting, with extruding, and with tapering, you can create some really cool forms and come up with some really cool designs in Fusion. So this has been a video for how to go about creating a screwdriver case, utilizing extruding and tapering, lofting, you know, we did circular patterns, we did polygons, and shelling. A lot of cool features to learn and utilize in Fusion 360.